I often get asked a question as to what should I do after I've imagined? Man thinks that he must do something. Man is convinced that man is out on the outside. But man is within, as all things are. The story is that God became man. He didn't become something else. He became man. And so God trips. God spills his beer. God sings and all these wonderful things because he became man. But man finds trouble to believe this. It seems too good to be true. But man is within. And so when I get asked, what should I do? They usually refer to the I in that question as something on the outside. But I is within. And so you ask yourself, what should I do? It really should be, where should I imagine myself to be inside myself? Because that is me. And so you identify yourself with imagination, not with your senses, as Neville has said. You see that the I and the imagination are one. That where I am at inside myself, that is where I reside. That is truly where I'm at. And so I don't need a savior on the outside. I can leave everything alone. I let others be so that I can be inside. But by me, I mean the inner me. The inner man. That is you. That is who you identify with. So you will no longer ask, what should I do? It's where you occupy it, inside yourself. That's the only thing you need to change is self. And so you let everyone have their thoughts and opinions, and you let everyone have every thought and opinion that they want. And you change self. You don't do it on the outside of yourself, you do it on the inside. You become the thing that you want to be. You occupy that space. But man has a difficulty with thinking that he is within, that man is within. And when you see this truth, because it is a truth, when you see the truth of this, as Neville has said, that you will find the core of reality when man identifies himself with his own imagination instead of his own senses, which we so often do. And so the inner man always sees things as already being so. The, to the inner man, the fig tree that was cursed was already cursed, and yet it happened the next day here in this on this plane of existence. And so Christ curses the fig tree, but he did it in his imagination, and then it happened. But Christ is not a person. It's you. And what I mean is that the Christ or this state has states for itself that whatever I desire, I will believe I have it and I will. But these words become your words. You take upon this identity and you will see that it's the identity of the inner man who is truly you. And so these words become yours. You keep them as your own. You say them as your own. That whatsoever I desire, I'll believe I have it and I will. And to do that, you have to let everything be. To truly follow your own words, you have to let it all be. Don't think it's some Christ. Those words belong to some Christ long ago, to some Savior who who existed 2,000 years ago. That Savior is within us, as all things are. The Savior we seek is within us, and we see it's ourselves. The I is our Savior. And so I go to occupy something. That's all that means is when it says to repent or to change oneself. is just to occupy something new. You find a new place, a new home within you. And you rest there. And you find the mental breath of relief in you. As all things are, the breath is within you. Everyone knows the sigh of relief when one finds their peace. But find the mental breath of relief. 
It exists on a mental plane. That you can take anything on the outside here and duplicate it inside. You can create another image. And that one who sees that image is the inner man. That's Christ. That's God. But man thinks God is something else. He idealizes a, a human, and by doing that, he dehumanizes them. He degrades one, and then he dehumanizes a, a human. But man became humanity. They're one. And so you elevate humanity by seeing that it's one with God. It is God. And, that, and in that way, you find unity, a true unity. You don't idealize anyone because you don't have to. They're just a state. It's just God occupying a state. And I want to stress the message is that you take those words as your own and you live upon them as if they're your own. Whatsoever I desire, I believe I have and I will. These are your words. You walk by them. You apply them. You practice them. You don't go to anything outside of self to fulfill oneself. And so the question as to what do I do, sometimes it's not the, sometimes when I don't understand something, I'm not, maybe I'm not asking the right question. and I don't doubt my ability to understand. I just don't think I'm asking the right question in the right way. And in this case, the I is what we need to change. You have to relate to the I with the imagination. Then you'll understand it. You'll understand Neville. It's right there. You'll get it. And then you'll start moving. You'll start applying it. You'll start forgiving yourself. You'll start being new things. But you can't change self if you don't know what it is. If you don't know where it is. If you think man is on the outside then you're going to always seek for another savior. And so the true savior of life is within us. And it is us. And this is a redemptive story. And take what I'm saying seriously. Apply these words as your own. As if you are the Christ saying them. They're coming from your lips that you are the one who follows the teachings, that you don't wait for four months. You say the harvest is ripe. You apply these teachings as if they're your very own, and you take upon the identity of Christ, which is your true own identity. I cannot think of another state that is more important to occupy. It seems to me that over time, I have found nothing more worthy to imagine being. You can be this and that, but I found taking the words of Christ as your own to be so impactful that they feel I know they're true. And I don't wait upon anyone to, up, to accept these as my own. I just apply them as if they are my own. And the freedom that comes with accepting these words as your very own it's the peace that comes with it it's a true stilling of of a restless soul you finally find that area in you that mental breath of relief you find it through applying it and so if you want to truly understand this message in neville's teachings on a deep level Take those words as your very own and apply them, and you will see that you are the Christ. You are the Savior you've been seeking. It's you. And I don't mean you, the one that, the, I'm not speaking to the body of you or your senses or the name you were given. I'm speaking to the I in you, the consciousness in you. I'm speaking to that being. As I said, these videos are addressed to the inner man that it is already so to you. Now change you and change I when I speak and identify that with the spiritual man, the inner man, 
and then from there you will know what to do. You will know what to imagine. You will no longer seek another God. You will no longer seek another man to give you what you want. You will follow those you will follow that teaching. Whatsoever I desire, I will believe I have it, and I will. <laughs>